Okay, hello and welcome to today's event, uh, one-click document generation for and signing for Microsoft Dynamics CRM. I'm Jason Gumper from msdynamicsworld.com, and we're joined today by David Squid of Expert Doc and um, Delani Silva of eSign Live. So as we get started, please know that you can add your feedback and ask questions using the Q&A block today that you'll see to the right side of the webcast session here. Delani and David will take questions at the end of their presentation. So uh, without further delay, I'm going to hand things off to David Squibb to start uh, the presentation. Thanks <clears throat> Thanks so much, Jason. I uh, appreciate everybody's time today. Uh, again, my name is Dave Squibb, and I'm the Chief Sales and Marketing Officer here at Expert Doc, and appreciate everybody's uh, participation in our session today, and, and certainly appreciate the partnership that we have uh, with eSign Live by Vasco and, and uh, doing some great things together as companies. Uh, our session today is really focused around uh, one-click document generation and uh, e-signature signing. Uh, uh, directly from Dynamics CRM. And uh, as we work uh, with companies, uh, we find that uh, there's a, a greater and greater need uh, for companies to be able to leverage the investment uh, that they've made in Dynamics CRM uh, for uh, doing more effective communications and, and communicating uh, and engaging their customers in a more effective way. Uh, at Expert Doc, we are a Microsoft Gold Partner, uh, and that's really uh, what we do in the Microsoft arena is to really help customers, uh, in, uh, companies engage with their customers uh, in a very meaningful way. And what what we have found is that uh, uh, many many of the uh, co companies that are using Dynamic CRM, uh, they are finding that Dynamic CRM is a very very powerful tool. Uh, but we've had, uh, uh, to date, over 200 companies have turned to us uh, because what, they, what they're telling us is, is that they're, they're investing a lot of time, effort, and money in CRM implementations, uh, but they are not able to actually leverage the data that is inside of the system to get it to get at that data uh, for meaningful communications with their customers. Uh, they tell us that mail merge is very uh, difficult to work with. Uh, the steps that uh, you have to go through uh, to utilize mail merge, um, it does not allow you to uh, create uh, meaningful documents and it does not allow you to actually get at that data in a very easy format. Um, we know that Microsoft is taking some steps to simplify that, but still uh, the, the types of documents that you can create utilizing mail merge are, are very kind of uh, stagnant, stagnant and two-dimensional. Um, and so then some companies turn to SSRS and use the SSRS reporting tools uh, to try and get around the complexities of using mail merge. And even uh, from the perspective of SSRS, again, we know that's a reporting tool and not really designed for meaningful and engaging communications with their customers. Uh, and then what that actually ends up resulting is, is that adoption level within companies uh, of CRM, uh, the adoption of, of utilization in CRM of their sales and marketing teams and the, the client-facing teams actually goes down because they look at that as a duplicate task because they can't get the information out once they put it in. Uh, and because they can't get at it in a meaningful way, what many companies uh, end up happening, uh, having them, uh, what they end up doing is, is utilizing uh, external methods to get at that information. So they'll create uh, external documents outside of T, uh, CRM, they'll cut and paste information from CRM, they'll modify it, and then that ends up with a disparity between what actually was sent out to cust their customers and what they're actually tracking inside of CRM. The last kind of result of that is, is that uh, ultimately, uh, in many cases, it results in incorrect branding, uh, so it, it creates a problem for the marketing people as well as it also creates uh, issues in many cases with approved language or legal language uh, for the documents that um, you know, individual people are, are working outside of CRM. And so as we work with companies, they find that they want to have ways of actually creating templates that allow them to create very dynamic communications to their customers. 
Uh, and so with ExpertDoc, what we allow companies using CRM to do is to create a template. Um, and in that template, you can create very dynamic data. Um, you can include uh, digital content, and that can be uh, images. It can be videos. Uh, we even have a customer that is utilizing 3D images of the, of the parts that they manufacture. So when a document gets mailed out to a prospect, they actually can use their mouse and scroll in and out and rotate take the image right in the document. So we allow digital content to be included in those templates. Uh, they certainly can pull any information from CRM, and we'll show you a sample of how that works today. Uh, pulling information from their ERP system, so for co very complex quotes or things that they're pulling out of ERP, all of that can also be embedded into a template as well. And all of that is handled inside of our template manager, which gives you flexibility for multiple versions, uh, different versions perhaps by business unit or target market, um, and then also uh, very complex business rules. So you can create a template that allows you to uh, create a logic that's based off of information that's coming from within CRM. Uh, so, for example, you may want to have one image come in if you're writing a, a quote in the state of California, uh, or you may want to uh, modify the imagery if you're writing in the state of Wisconsin. So you have the ability to embed business rules uh, directly into the templates. And again, the, the other key, key need that uh, this actually helps companies using CRM with is, is that you can adjust your documents and workflows throughout the entire life cycle. So perhaps you want to have multiple people reviewing it before it gets mailed out to the customer. Or perhaps it happens to be a contract and you want to have back and forth redlining and negotiation prior to actually sending that off. Uh, for any signature. So all of those workflows can be adjusted in the template and within the expert doc uh, system and how it interacts with CRM. And then ultimately for the delivery. And so really the key is to uh, empower companies to take all of the information that they've embedded into dynamic CRM or their ERP or even external uh, applications, bring that all into a place where you can create a template that uh, establishes the format, establishes the branding, establishes the language, um, and really um, execute that in a very simple way from within dynamic CRM. And so some of the things that, that uh, we bring to the table that actually help you as companies using dynamic CRM is that we actually allow you to create templates directly in Microsoft Word. Um, and you'll see today, we're actually going to show you an example of a quote. Um, and we actually, with our CRM connector and our template designer, we actually expose all of the CRM fields directly in our template designer in Microsoft Word. So the person that is uh, actually building the template can determine where they want the data fields to, to reside uh, directly into uh, that template. Um, and again, uh, all of that can be executed directly uh, once the template is completed, uh, directly from CRM in a single click. Um, so again, the days of mail merge with you know 20 plus steps to get data out of CRM onto a document are gone. Again, as I said, business rules can be configured. Uh, they can handle things like multiple jurisdictions, multiple languages. We have a company that's now writing in 10 countries in 10 different languages. Uh, and so that is all handled through the, the logic within the template. Um, again, uh, approval and, and collaboration workflows really help with efficiency and productivity gains. Um, and then we also allow for omni-channel delivery. Um, what you're going to see today is with a single click inside of CRM, um, we're going to uh, produce a quote and send it off to a customer for um, actual signature and, and direct integration from CRM through our solution into uh, eSign Live by Vasco. Um, and then uh, ultimately uh, ability to track changes uh, for any negotiated clauses and terms that help you close deals faster. 
and, and so before we go to the demo, right, a couple of things that, that really, you know, we hope you keep in mind is that as you are, are thinking about this type of technology, understand it's not just about technology, uh, whether it's a uh, customer communication solution or whether it's an e-signature solution, it is really about harnessing digital power and really adopting a holistic approach um, and understanding that it can really um, uh, take what you're doing with dynamic CRM today and take you to a very different position where it becomes a very powerful tool um, that allows you to interact and engage your customers in a much more cohesive fashion. Um, and again, um, it's really about doing a better job against the people who you're competing against uh, because you are able to engage your customers in a better experience um, and it makes it much easier for them to work with you as, as a provider. Um, and again, digital transactions uh, are contracts, and you'll see today that uh, what we're going to do is, is actually send this thing through from the point where I, as a salesperson, um, am sending a quote off to the customer, uh, and they actually can sign it, and I can track that back all the way through uh, into uh, CRM. Uh, so, so with that, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go ahead and, and uh, share my screen with you. Um, and what you're going to see here, uh, you're looking at, a, uh, this is Microsoft Word, and uh, this is a, a, a pretty straightforward, uh, simple quote. Um, and what you're looking at here is a Word document. So I have full functionality of Microsoft Word. Um, you see that I have everything at my disposal that I have inside of Word. Uh, and there's a new uh, ribbon here, uh, the Expert Doc ribbon. Uh, and this is where I have my full palette of tools that are available to me to do things in addition to what I want to do inside of Word. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is click on the Fields button, and here now what we've done is we've connected this template to Microsoft Dynamic CRM, and you see here I have all of the entities listed, all of the fields that are available to me, and I can actually expand these and see every single field, including custom fields that I've built, um, and I can do that for any entity. And I can go ahead and mix and match entities and fields from different entities onto a single template. Um, what you're looking at uh, here, this kind of white band here, uh, is a, an embedded image, and what this will do is pull through a logo field that I've stored in the Expert Doc um, Content Manager, uh, and so I can have multiple images. Um, we have one com customer who we work with who uh, they give their salespeople the choice of different uh, verticals that they sell into, and then the imagery and the language throughout their proposal changes. Uh, so if they're selling into a um, healthcare uh, uh, company, uh, all of the images are hospitals and laboratories, as opposed to if they're selling to an educational institution, those images all, all uh, immediately transfer uh, automatically uh, in their template to be classrooms and campus uh, images. So you can uh, store dynamic uh, content right in the uh, system here. Uh, and then these are actually fields that I'm, I've, I've allocated onto this template here uh, that are going to pull directly in from CRM. So here I'm going to pull the name of the account, I'm going to pull my primary contact person, the name of the company, the address, and then down in here you see I've embedded a loop, uh, and what this is going to do is actually loop through and for each uh, item on the quote, it's going to add another line in and then total up the, the totaling for the quote. Uh, you'll see down here uh, in my signature is where we're going to send it off to uh, eSign Live and, and we're going to actually get a signature on that. But I also have uh, full capabilities um, to utilize word functions. Uh, and so here I'm going to go ahead and insert, insert um, rather than pull a date in from CRM, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, choose a, a date and time format. Uh, let's use the long format here. Um, we'll get rid of this first one as I fat fingered it. Um, and so we'll put the date uh, that we're actually executing the quote there. 
Uh, and then here, uh, what I want to do is, is I actually want to uh, include my quote number on this. And so you see what I'm doing here is I'm coming down into the fields in the quote entity, um, and I'm going to pick my quote number right here. And this one's not inside a loop. It's a standalone field. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and book again. I'm fat fingering here. I want to make that, I want to put that right here. So let me do that one more time for you. And I'm going to go ahead and insert that right there. So um, what I've done is, uh, that's just uh, how easy it is to pull information from Dynamic CRM. Um, when I'm done with this template, then I would upload it to uh, my portal. And uh, in, within uh, Expert Doc, uh, we actually have the ability to uh, actually pull in test data so that I can verify what will this actual template look like when it's rendered. Um, and so here I'm still in Microsoft Word and I'm saying, okay, uh, as a person designing this template, is this what I want it to look like? Uh, yes, everything seems to be good there. Um, and so what we can then do is actually go ahead and close out of the preview. And what I'm going to do now is actually open a session of uh, CRM where I have um, uploaded this template to. And you see I'm, I'm in dynamic CRM now. Uh, and uh, here this happens to be um, in the, uh, we'll use the Acme distribution company. And I'm going to go into my quotes. And I've already, uh, within, within this account, I've actually set up um, a, a quote. So this is uh, for Acme's new storage facility. Um, and within Dynamic CRM, so as a salesperson, I can come in here and make whatever uh, changes that I want. Uh, so, um, like, we can just, let's call this uh, the, um, let's make it the advanced heating system. Uh, and so we can make whatever changes. Uh, certainly we can um, come in here and, and uh, change the price and say, you know, what, they, they, we just decided to give them a, a discount on this one. So rather than edit that in a Word document, I actually can go ahead and uh, create that here uh, right within CRM so that all of my information is tracked in a single source of truth. Now with Expert Doc, when you load the CRM for Dynamics Connector, um, you basically are getting this document output tab. And then for any templates that I have deployed, here I have the single one that I've just shown you. Uh, but this could also be a non-disclosure agreement or a full-out contract. Um, this is um, what you're seeing here is Expert Doc Smart Form technology that allows me to configure whatever I want to allow um, the user of CRM, how I want them to interact with the uh, solution um, that is uh, uh, interact with the template that we're going to actually render. So this is a very simplistic example. Uh, so here, um, let's say the signatory was uh, going to be Mary Jones. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and use my email address so that you all will see what happens. Um, and then with, um, with uh, eSign Live, uh, I have the ability to do uh, a written, so using my finger on a, on a um, tablet or a, a mobile device, uh, or a mouse on a screen, which I'll use here. Or we can actually uh, configure it to do uh, a typed response, typed signature. Um, and then this smart form here, we could actually uh, ask any other questions that are necessary. Um, and so if you wanted to perhaps attach um, other marketing pieces to this, or you wanted to put a, um, a set of uh, specifications, for example, uh, I can certainly uh, put those as options here that the person using CRM uh, could select, and then those things would be added directly onto 
um, the form, the document that's actually getting uh, sent out. And so what I basically do, uh, once I've done that, so you see here I've done a single click. I click on execute. Um, and what it's doing uh, is, uh, in spite of uh, having to go through WebEx here, um, what it's doing is, is it's going out, it's pulling that template off the portal, which is up in the cloud. Um, it went into CRM and it pulled the information back. Uh, it found that we had configured it for uh, eSign Live, uh, and uh, it's now already sent that off to eSign Live. Um, it's shown me a rendering of what that proposal looks like. You can see here it automatically pulled in where I changed advanced in the heating system description, and it put the new price on here of $10,000 and adjusted all of that information. I'm going to go ahead and shut, uh, close out of this. And what I want to do now is actually look here in the notes. And uh, sorry, I want to look up here uh, under electronic signatures. And you're going to see that when I look here, the one that I just rendered here at 2.19 p.m. shows me that the signing is pending with my customer. So that means the customer has not executed the contract yet. So within CRM, I can see exactly where this is in the process. Now, if I go to email, because, again, I am uh, – proposing as Mary Jones here, you can see that here uh, for Mary Jones, I've now gotten an email that has come over from eSign Live. And again, this is completely configurable. You can brand it your own way. Uh, but here it just says Ange Angela Marshall, who is my admin person, uh, has added you as a signer to the eSign package. And when I click to that, it automatically links me into the uh, eSign Live platform. Um, here's all the legal language that they provide that says, you know, you're about to sign a legal document. This is legal and binding. Do you accept? And when I accept, it will show me a rendering of the document that came out of expert doc directly from CRM. So again, that one single click, um, I as the salesperson have still not done anything else. When I come in as Mary Jones and I sign her name, my name, uh, I go ahead and click OK. And that now tells me that they are securing it. And it shows me now um, a rendering and tells me the package is complete. Now, I'm going to show you just a, a couple things here. I'm going to go back into my email. Um, and you see here that I now have another email from eSign Live that tells me, hi, Mary, signing is now complete, and they have, we have automatically emailed back to Mary the copy for her records. And so now she has a fully legal binding version of that signed agreement. Now, I could have set it up that I have to sign it as well. Um, but uh, again, for the simplicity of this demo, uh, we opted to just do, do a single signature. And again, that can have many, many signatures on it as necessary. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to see this one that says signing, signing still says pending, um, and that's again because I haven't refreshed. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh that status. Uh, and it now tells me, again, within CRM, that the quote has been now signed and it is complete. So fully now within CRM, I have a full track, uh, full uh, audit trail of what has gone on. Um, and then I, you can see in here that I now have an actual version of that template signed by Mary in CRM attached to my uh, uh, quote, in this case, quote entity. But again, it could be attached to your uh, account entity or contact entity. Uh, it can be attached anywhere you choose to configure that to, um, to be attached within CRM. Uh, so uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, uh, turn this back over. And I think we're next going to uh, uh, hear from uh, uh, Delani Silva at uh, from uh, eSign Live by Vasco. Great. 
Great. So thanks, David. That was a great demo. So we're excited to be partnering up with the expert doc for this solution. It looks fantastic. So hello, everyone. My name is Delani Silva, uh, Product Marketing Specialist at eSign Live. I want to thank you all for uh, attending this afternoon. So for many years, there's been talk of the paperless office. E-signature solutions have been around for some time, but are only now being seen as a critical component of digitization efforts in organizations. So we conducted a market research study at eSign Live last year to better understand why e-signatures are become a, becoming a priority for organizations. And many of these organizations are tackling multiple digital transformation initiatives, of which e-signatures play a considerable role. So this slide up that I have up here right now exemplifies the top three reasons why organizations are using e-signatures to go digital. So for example, one customer uh, told us, Digitizing our business is an ongoing strategic initiative for our company. And another one said, our customers and employees were frustrated by the problems caused by paper-based signing. And finally, improving our internal and customer-facing workflows is a priority. So as you can see, the main business drivers for moving to an all-digital process with e-signatures is around operational efficiency and improving the overall customer experience. So many of the businesses that we speak to often ask uh, that same question, where do I start? So the first step in digitizing your business may seem daunting, but that's where experienced providers like eSign Live can help. So we've helped companies with the most simple to the most complex signing and automation requirements. So documents are the foundation of any company, so it's really important to understand which documents are falling to paper in your workflows. So this is the first step for you to move from paper intensive to fully digital processes, both inside and outside the organization. So sales, HR, finance, procurement, and IT are all great starting points for moving to an all digital process. And if you're leading the digital charge within your company, most of the people you involve will see the value of what you're doing. But executing, on the, other, on the other hand, can be a little bit tricky, especially in organizations that are set in their ways and don't embrace change easily. So we recommend a three-step approach to help you get your digitization efforts underway. So first off, you can start by scheduling a use case workshop internally to identify and prioritize primary use cases. Internal stakeholders will help identify which processes are holding back efficiencies within your organization. Secondly, you can document the current process and compare it against the future process with document generation and e-signature processes. And make sure to identify which steps will be eliminated from the workflow to help you further drive your digitization strategy forward. And lastly, you can define your requirements based on use cases, workflow, e-signature features, and other needs such as security, audit, and compliance. This will help you start putting together a short list of providers that can meet your specific needs. So today we have a cross-section of individuals and organizations that are uh, attending the webcast. So I had a look at the uh, attendee list uh, last week, and there are folks from uh, banks, credit union, state, local, and federal government, insurance, life sciences, as well as a whole slew of other industries. So I just want to take a, um, a step back at, uh, right now and uh, you know take a look at the slide and look at some of the top e-signature use cases that we at eSign Live are seeing. So this slide that I have up right now covers a number of use cases by department, whether you're in sales, operations, legal, or any other department. So for example, across all industries, we see many businesses digitize their contracting and procurement processes with the help of e-signatures. So this includes contracts, proposals, and NDAs with external parties. With respect to internal examples, one popular use case is HR contracts for digitally onboarding new employees in an organization. So in the paper world, there's typically a large stack of paper that the new employee needs to review and sign when they join an organization, and all of this can be streamlined with e-signatures digitally. And we're also seeing organizations deploy e-signatures as an enterprise solution to gain efficiencies and improve the overall customer experience, specifically once they've been successful in a handful of uh, use cases. So once the initial set of use cases are tested and proven, we often see organizations expand their usage across multiple lines of business and departments.
So in terms of adoption, we see e-signatures being used across a range of distribution channels, what's often called the omni-channel. It's worth noting that e-signatures are being used by multiple channels and adoption rates will vary by channel. So the slide that I have up for you right now uh, refers to the different channels where you can use e-signatures. So our platform is uh, pretty flexible, so you can use it across multiple use cases and channels, such as unmediated channels on the left-hand side of the spectrum, which are typically self-serve, and mediated channels on the right, where you typically have access to documents via a third party um, through an agent or uh, even a call center rep. In unmediated channels, it's common to see close to 100% adoption and a bit lower further you go down the mediated channel. So just a last word about how to get uh, started with e-signatures. So while today's webcast is focused on um, how to quickly generate and sign documents in dynamic CRM, organizations are adding e-signature capabilities to multiple enterprise applications and business processes. A question we often get asked is, how can I get started? So there are a number of ways in which an organization can consume e-signatures, and this largely depends on your use case, whether that's a sender-driven ad hoc process or even an integrated process where the system is generating the document. So as a result, we offer three flavors of eSign Live to satisfy the various use cases in the market. So based on the slide that I have up, we'll start from uh, the left and we'll go towards the right. So the first one is our standalone select out-of-the-box solution, uh, and this largely satisfies the common e-contracting use cases in the market. So, for example, getting your contracts and agreements electronically signed, and this is a great place to dip your toes in the water because there's absolutely no development required. You simply upload your document, select your signers, and you're beginning the e-signing process in minutes. We also offer a number of uh, pre-built connectors for third-party applications like uh, Salesforce, SharePoint, Box, Office, uh, Office 365, and of course, uh, Dynamic CRM. So with these connectors, we've done all the integration work for you, and uh, you'll need minimal admin resources to get started with e-signatures inside of these popular enterprise applications. And lastly, we enable you to to add e-signing capabilities into your own applications, whether that's a web portal, a core system, homegrown solution, or legacy application. We have an open REST API as well as fully supported SDKs uh, to help you build your own custom uh, e-signature integration. So and with that, I'm going to throw it back to uh, Jason, and uh, I guess we'll start with question period. All right, great. Thanks, Delani. Yeah, so uh, we will open it up for questions. Please enter yours into the Q&A uh, block you should see just to the right of <coughs> the main slide presentation area. And we will get to as many as we can uh, with, the, with the time we have left. So uh, let's see here. The first question that we had in the queue as I, uh, as I go back up. Um, and on eSign Live, so, so uh, question for you, Delani. Can I use eSign Live e-signatures on different devices? So that's a great question. We get that a lot. Um, so with e-signing, you can essentially use any type of device. Um, and the way our solution is built, it's based on HTML5 signing. So it's responsive. So whether you're on a desktop computer, your smartphone, or a tablet, that whole signing experience is adapted to whatever device you're using. So typically what we see is that there are more people signing on their mobile devices. And this is really no surprise because people are on the go and it's just more convenient for them to uh, e-sign documents um, like an NDA or a mortgage form straight from their phones. So what happens is that the recipient will receive a web link in their email and they'll be brought to the signing ceremony where they can simply sign from their phones. Okay, great. Um, and and, and a question for David. Um, regarding smart forms, can you elaborate on what that is and how it can be used in conjunction with CRM? Sure. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, so a smart form is a technology that we built uh, here at Expert Talk, and it's actually uh, one example of it is what I showed you inside of the uh, CRM window in that document output section. Uh, and really what a smart form is, is it's a web-enabled, it's a web-deployed form that allows for uh, you to configure whatever types of input you want on that form, uh, and then those are used for um, interacting with our templates. 
Uh, so some of the common uses of them, of course, in CRM is uh, to select the template that you want, uh, that you actually want to render, or to key in additional information. Um, it, we have customers that uh, will work with a smart form and there may be things that aren't captured inside of CRM. Perhaps uh, what look and feel do you want the proposal to have? Um, or, uh, and, and you may have two or three different flavors of what that proposal could look like. Uh, it could be uh, do you want to send this out in draft form or do you want to send it out uh, for electronic signature? Um, the other thing is, is that we also have uh, a customer, one customer who's using it, um, and they are using it in their call center, uh, and they uh, build their the language, the introductory language, um, in the in the paragraph of their template, uh, and it pulls in variability, uh, and the, it gives the call center people options in a menu. So it says, um, you know, based on and then they have the option of, of selecting our conversation, our email exchange, uh, and then they have this morning, this afternoon, yesterday. Um, and so it will take and mix and match uh, multiple iterations of that based on uh, what the call center person plugs in. So a, a smart form is really just that. It's a form that allows for entry of information uh, that a customer can utilize. In the case of, of dynamic CRM, we expose it in the window. Uh, but you also could expose it on a web page or a custom application, uh, and then that could actually direct you and pull information and bring it back into CRM. Okay, thanks, David. Next question is uh, another eSign Live uh, question, I think, for you, Delani. What type of audit trails are included in eSign Live? So that's another great question. So our audit trails are embedded in the document, and we have two types of audit trails, um, a static audit trail and an active audit trail. So the static audit trail basically shows what was signed. So in other words, the static audit trail gives information such as the steps the signer took in the e-signature process and date and time stamps of when the signature took place, and basically all other actions the signer took during the uh, signing ceremony. And uh, the active audit trail, on the other hand, is a visual playback of the exact steps of um, how the signer signed the document. All right. Uh, next question. Can you pull? Okay, this is another. Um, uh, <clears throat> I think there's another one for David. Can you pull data from custom fields and custom entities into a single template? Uh, yeah, great question. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, you can pull uh, standard uh, dynamics fields. You can also pull custom fields, uh, and you can pull them from any entity, including custom entities. Um, the example I showed today of the quote, we were actually pulling uh, information in from both the account entity and the quote entity. Those two happen to be standard uh, sets of fields. Uh, but you also can uh, you know, pull in any any number of custom fields. And unlike mail merge, you're not limited to a set number or a set number of entities either. So it's completely open-ended. All right. Um, so, Delani, another one for you is eSign Live Secure. Um, so we do take the security of our uh, clients' data and documents very seriously at eSign Live. So we cater our products to uh, security-conscious organizations within um, government, financial services, and um, the insurance industries. So we've partnered with uh, leading cloud service providers such as Amazon Web Services and IBM Software who have compliant data centers. So in addition to the numerous controls in place at the data center level, eSign Live is also compliant at the application level with our SOC 2 attestation, which is among the highest standards um, of cloud security security and data protection. So yes, in short, uh, eSign Live is a secure solution. All right, great. And uh, next question. Uh, is it possible to, uh, and again, for, this one's for David, is it possible to add attachments to a rendered template directly from CRM? Yeah, we have uh, many companies that are doing that. Uh, you, you can store uh, PDFs. 
uh, accompanying documents, Word documents. Uh, you can store uh, documents from any, any virtual, virtually any uh, format that you want to have it in a secure location. That could be on a server. Uh, it could be in SharePoint. Uh, it could be in the Expert Doc uh, Content Manager, which is a, an ECM type of solution. Um, and then configure uh, the Expert Doc uh, in that smart form window um, to allow the user to select whatever items they may want to attach. You can even configure it so that uh, you can, uh, those, that window, the selection options are actually dynamic. So it'll go out and read what's in a particular directory in SharePoint or in our content manager and uh, adjust the uh, available options uh, for the user inside of CRM. All right. Uh, next question we have here uh, is, uh, I think in another uh, eSign Live question. So my client <coughs> is concerned about the legality of eSign contracts over a certain amount. Uh, is there any reason for that? Um, no, there there is no reason for that. Um, e-signatures are, are actually uh, legal in, in most uh, countries, and uh, there's actually an e-sign act that was um, passed in 2000. Um, so it basically, you know, e-signatures are enforceable in a court of law just as much as a handwritten signature, if not better, because, um, you know, in, in terms of our solution, we offer evidence in terms of, you know, the, the timestamps and the exact steps uh, a signer took to um, to um, complete the signature process. So e-signatures are completely legal. Okay. Um, let's see, another question here in the queue. Um, can customers forward the to-be-signed document to a colleague if they're not entitled to sign it? And uh, Delaney, I think that one was for, for you. Delaney, do we still have you on the line? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question, please? Sure. Yes, up here. do you hear me? I, I can hear you now, yes. Um, so okay. can customers forward a to-be-signed document to a colleague if they're not entitled to sign themselves? Will it then still work? You know, I'm going to have to circle back on that question. Um, if if that person can just send me that uh, that question over, let me let me take a look at that. Sure, and I'll just mark it here so that we can uh, we can hold on to that one for you. Sure. Um, the next yeah. question: Will Will, will Expert Doc integrate with CRM Online? Uh, absolutely. We, we support uh, CRM online uh, as well as on-premise, uh, and we actually offer our solution both on-premise as well as uh, online, So, and you can mix and match that. So an on-premise uh, in implementation of CRM can interact with an online version of our solution and vice versa. So uh, all of those scenarios are fully, uh, fully supported. All right, great. Um, a couple questions on, um, I think a combined solution, maybe we'll give this to both of you. Um, can, you use, can you use this solution on-premise without the cloud service, and, and can it be used offline? Um, Delani, do you want to take this first? Yeah, so we offer um, several deployment options. So yes, on-premise is definitely um, an option and also in the cloud. Um, as for offline capability, we do have offline capability for, uh, for e-signatures. And the same is true for Expert Doc. We, we support both of those scenarios uh, as well as offline. Okay, great. Uh, next question. Uh, well, okay, so uh, is it, um, I think this is an Expert Doc, but uh, maybe again for both of you, is this just for uh, Microsoft Word or also for PowerPoint templates? Yeah, so uh, from, a, from a template perspective, uh, the templates are in Microsoft Word. Uh, and Word is our, our, our template designer is built on top of Microsoft Word. Uh, but you can embed PowerPoint objects within the template. So um, they can be dynamically linked. Um, but again, the, the actual template itself is uh, built in Word, uh, and it's built in the open XML behind the Word document.
Okay. Um, does expert doc support the rich text support of CRM 2016? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we support most formats uh, that are out there, but uh, we also support uh, rich text, Word, uh, PDF, HTML, images, 3D images, and video content can all be embedded within the generated documents. All right. Uh, will ExpertDoc work with document management areas in dynamic CRM like document management through SharePoint or OneDrive? Um, if the question is asking, will can you configure it to store the rendered documents uh, in those locations, the answer is yes. Um, you can configure it to store it, as I showed today, uh, as an attachment in notes. Uh, but the example, for example, the way I do it uh, in my own production environment here at Expert Doc is they're actually stored on SharePoint. All right. Uh, a question here, what version of eSign Live is required for integration with Dynamic CRM and Expert Docs, and um, what is the cost, and also how do users get counted? Is it all users or just the ones sending the documents out? David, is that is that for you, or? I, I, th I, th I, think, I think it's on the signature side, but again, um, from a pricing perspective, uh, it, it would we we typically and, and I, I believe this to be true at eSign as well. Uh, we don't we don't require you to have a, a version or a license for every licensed CRM user. Um, there are options available for a per user. Uh, you know, uh, you can you can do a named user or you can do a um, a bank or a bucket of signatures uh, and because that's how we would actually package it through uh, with eSign. And uh, Delaney, there was a question there. Uh, part, part of that was asking the version of eSign Live that's required for the integration. Um, I'm going to have to get back to you uh, on that one. OK, I'll make a note of that. Um, uh, okay, here's an interesting question. What if a customer does not have an email address? How legal is the signature if we use the sales rep's email? Do you mind uh, saying that question again? So what if the customer does not have an email address? How legal is the signature if we use the sales rep's email? Um, well, yeah, you, you can, uh, well, we have a, an in-person uh, signing um, where, you know, the sales rep can initiate the signing um, in person with, um, with, with a client to, uh, to get their signatures, so it should work. Okay, um, I, I guess one, we're down to sort of our last question here. I'll make a last call um, for any additional questions that anyone wants to ask before we uh, begin wrapping up. So. I know we've already touched on cost, um, but the other question here is how difficult, or can you talk about the installation process? Um, and maybe we'll give that to both of you. Um, Delaney, do you want to go first? Um, I'll let Dave uh, start it off. Thanks, thanks, Delaney. Um, so I, I think um, from the installation process on the expert doc side, uh, it's very, very straightforward. It's fully automated. Obviously, there's two pieces to that. There's the uh, kind of server side piece, the, the part that actually is the connector to CRM. Uh, so that has to be set up and, and connected or configured to tie into your CRM installation. And then there's the template designer piece, which is the desktop add-in for the person who's building the uh, Word templates. Uh, and so it's a very straightforward. It's a matter of minutes to actually set up uh, the uh, expert doc solution. And um, on our end, we have a pre-built uh, connector with, M uh, with uh, Dynamic CRM. So you can also get um, up and running with that connector within minutes. All right, great. Um, can, sorry, I had a little phone issue there. Okay. Um, another question that came in, uh, can you configure email addresses, the email address field to take the contact or customer information? 
Uh, I'll assume that's directed to me from the perspective of where I keyed in the email address into the smart form. Uh, but yes, that could easily be pulled uh, from the field inside of CRM. Uh, and, and you wouldn't even have to see it on the um, smart form at all. Um, I personally, in, in my own production implementation, um, I find many times that a person that we're working with, um, they may come back and say, you know what, it's not going to be me that's signing it, it's going to be our attorney. Uh, and so that attorney is somebody that I could go and add them into CRM and, and then pull off of that. But from, a, from the perspective, we find it just uh, straightforward to actually just key who is the signing authority or authorities uh, directly into the smart form. All right, and I, I see that I missed a question earlier. Um, I think this is one for Delani, but if a sales rep wants a customer to sign the document on a sales rep's own iPad, uh, not the customer's iPad, um, how would you handle that scenario? So, um, yeah, that's a great question. So as I mentioned before, um, we actually have an in-person um, signing option. So um, the sales rep can actually enable this option and uh, the contract will come up on their iPad and basically you can, you know, initiate that e-signature process in person and capture your customer's uh, signature on the spot. Um, and here's a, an interesting one. Can a data value captured during the signing process, for example, a title or a secondary phone number, uh, be captured back into CRM? So, um, yeah, so we, we can, Delani? yeah, sure, I can, I can take that. So we can actually capture, um, yeah, like title um, of the person, um, their, their company name, uh, date that, that the, the document's being signed, um, so that, that information will be captured. All right, great. And, um, Again, I think we're down to our last question. Really, the only other question was whether there's anything else you can elaborate about pricing, and that would be for, for either one of you. Well, I'll take that, and I would say uh, my email address is on the screen, uh, as well as I know Delani's is as well. Uh, I'm happy to discuss pricing. Uh, it's, we have a very straightforward model, uh, but again, need a little more information before we can just throw a price out there. So. I'm happy to talk to any of you. If you want to send me an email, uh, we can we can arrange that. Send me your contact info. So yeah, so we we have um, professional pricing edition and also um, enterprise level. Um, so again, as uh, David just mentioned, it really depends on you know what you want to use e-signatures for, uh, how many users, so on and so forth. So uh, please feel free to send me the details um, at my email address, and uh, we we can figure out some pricing details for you. Wonderful. Well, that concludes uh, the Q&A that we have uh, here. Thank you so much to everyone in the audience for your attention today, for all the great questions throughout the presentation. Um, David and Delani, thank you both for taking the time to present today. Uh, really interesting stuff. We appreciate having you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. Great. And uh, we are recording today's event. We'll be making that available soon. Uh, but that concludes the event. Have a great day.